The topic of the panel is changing face of measurement and research and business outcomes. So, you know, to start with maybe a little bit of perspective on what's happening now in measurement and outcomes. Um, and maybe I guess we'll start with Howard and, and kind of the perspective of, um, you know, from, from programmatic, the shift to programmatic buying, you know, what, what kind of perceptible changes, even though it's early stages, have been seen? Yeah, so I, I guess the way to think about it is, and it's, you know, think about TV maybe a little different than digitally. Um, you know, we're now blessed with some really great data sets that allow us to do more programmatic type things um, on, on linear TV, even in a world where we're not addressable, but what we're doing is optimizing the impression against the audience that people care about. Um, you know, whether it's data from TRA, Roe v, whatever you guys are called, data from Nielsen, <laughs> data from Comscore. Um, you know, we, we do have great data. I, I think the thing that's sort of interesting, and hopefully we'll get to it in the panel, is, you know, just, just targeting based on who the person is and optimizing against audience is not enough. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the hope is that somehow through some of the brilliant research suppliers around, we get to a place where we're optimizing against outcomes. And, and that's not only gonna benefit our advertiser partners, but the other thing that it's gonna do is allow me to manage yield on my inventory better. If I know that Conan does better in terms of outcome for movie category than, than Cola, I wanna use that as a way to sort of optimize my yield. And, and how many different flavors of outcome do there need to be? Like, is outcome per advertiser, per campaign? I would say it has to be per campaign. Um, you know, we can only think that sales is the ultimate measure that people care about. Um, you know, there are going to be some people who care about brand, uh, brand awareness, product awareness. If you're a movie studio, you care about awareness that a movie is opening. So I think we've got to be really flexible about that. So, Jonathan, you know, on outcomes, maybe we we talked earlier about kind of you go to one extreme where you have performance-based outcomes that that are certainly done by brand mark or by marketers on TV, um, and definitely done in digital media. How does that? How have you seen that change and shift? Both well, I mean, I, I think you know, having come from TiVo, where we had the TRA product, which was literally all about taking purchase data for especially CPG, linking it to exact exposures, um, using that first to you know, come up with an optimized schedule and then ideally to measure sales lift, like that was great for CPG. But what's tricky is you know, for every different outcome, there's sort of a different path from you know, the first run, which is how do I take my audience who I knew I wanted to find and find them across different media channels. So there's a lack of connectivity of the data sets there that makes it a little bit challenging. Then once I made that buy, I need to do the same thing in a, on the measurement side of the house, which is who actually saw what, who didn't see it, and what did they do later? And I think that part is also still very challenging. So I mean, the biggest issue that I see is uh, the data connectivity pipeline between, um, you know, exposure pre-buy, exposure post-buy, and outcome. And I think, um, you know, uh, the other thing, you know, representing a really broad range of different clients uh, across Omnicom, we've got some advertisers like Apple who historically have focused, you know, very much on sort of high-level brand advertising and other folks on the other end of the spectrum, like SAP, who, you know, they sell enterprise software and they only really care about talking to a very specific audience. So, you know, one size fits all success against outcomes is tough. And um, what I'm hoping we can start to evolve now is a better conversation about the data plumbing in the middle to make it easier to connect from one end to the other, which was kind of 
throwing a softball to Joan. Okay, so that's thank good. you. That's great. I, I also want to say I really um, I like the way Howard described it too about you know optimizing on outcomes. I mean, essentially, audience-based targeting uh, is a stepping stone to um, more you know uh, optimization on specific brand-specific outcomes. And we have to do a better job in audience targeting in order to make this outcome measurement a reality. We do audience-based targeting on uh, digital platforms. I mean, it's sort of organic to the platform. It's much harder to do on television. And uh, that's what you know, we've really been working on at TiVo, is creating a platform to, um, of course, work on a cross-media basis, but really to focus in on you know, the $75 billion that's spent on linear television and making sure that, that audience targeting is kind of all the way through the system. You know, it's not just a report card on the front end that gives you some indexes. You know, you adjust your media plan or your scales plan and, you know, you, you kind of, you know, try to do the best you can that way. It, it really looks at optimizing every piece of inventory for that audience target so that you are guaranteeing that audience target the same way you would, uh, you would in a past life, have guaranteed that age and gender um, target. So I look at that as really an evolution of television that gets us closer to you know, optimizing on specific uh, brand out outcomes. We're not all the way there yet, but it's an important stepping stone. Um, so we actually really only focus on measuring attention. And we think attention is the proxy of one of the business outcome, which is brand awareness. So from that point of view, I completely agree with Howard. I think this industry still lack of the capability to really understand the business outcome, especially for brand advertisers, there's really not much. And we, we are a startup, but if you look at digital, there's so many great new products really emerging in this space. But on TV, I think people still try to majority uh, of the companies to try to measure reach and the GRP, and this model hasn't really changed for the last like, uh, uh, 30, 40 years. So I think right now industry really demands the, the a new data, hopefully more like a commodity, which can really track the business outcome, but we haven't seen that yet. So at one of the startup company, we really think that hopefully we can contribute to the industry, but we, I think uh, as an industry, we need to come together and somehow figure out a way to better track the business outcome, especially for the brand advertisers. So I'll, I'll agree with, with, with these guys, but in a different way. Um, so our industry is changing. Nobody will, will, will fight against that. It changes dramatically. We have programmatic. We have addressable. We have the ability to connect to audiences um, in a way that we historically have not. But just step back a second. What has changed in the relationship between a marketer and a consumer is nothing. That relationship is still the same, the desire to reach a consumer in the right platform with the right message to get them to think differently and behave differently. That will never change. It's the same ask 100 years ago will be the same ask 100 years from now. Right, so that relationship right, between the market and consumer has not changed, which changes everything in between. So the framework that I, that I try to create under, under any type of media or, or content or experiences is after I identified which audience I want to go after from a strategy and planning perspective, I look at exposure. Am I getting in front of those people? Am I getting in front of them enough times in the right places in, the, in creating the right experiences to get them to respond? So that's the second pillar is response. What's the response that I'm seeing? I mean, we have the luxury of a digital of great response, search, social site, video views. Right? After that is, are they engaging with me? One of those notions are attention. Are they, are they after I've piqued their interest and I've gotten to take a little behavior, are they giving me an exchange of value, their time against something that they, they find valuable. So that's gonna be participation in social, that's gonna be video views, that's going to be paying attention, right? So my message has the ability to wear in, or, or, or at least have the ability to, to seed into the conscious of, the, of what the consumer is thinking or feeling about me. Then that's the next fourth pillar is perception. Am I changing their fundamental beliefs based on what I just described, the, the first three pillars? And if that, if I do that from an awareness, perception, equity, imagery, consideration, intent, if I do those things, am I seeing a subsequent behavior? That behavior is always going to be sales. Right, so that relationship, what I just described to you, will never, will ne in my opinion, will never change because it's the right formula. 
if you get, you can't do one without the other, right? So if you go back enough in history and you look at what Ogilvy put together in the hierarchy of communication effects, sometimes we hear think, see, think, do. But if you think about the hierarchy of communication effects, something has to happen in order for other things to happen, right? There's an order and a process to this. Each one of those pillars needs to be understood in what granularity, because today we have metrics, both short-term and long-term proxy metrics that allow, uh, uh, allow us to understand the, that type of KPI from many different vantage points, and we should, but it should ultimately fit into that framework that says I went after an audience because I felt that that audience was the best audience, no matter how I came to it. Am I, am I reaching enough of them with enough frequency to get them to, to go down that path that I wanted to go path? And then can I measure the value of each one of them? Howard made a good point. It's not, it shouldn't be all about sales. But at the end of the day, let me tell you something. Advertisers spend money because they want to make money. Right? So they're looking to move product at some point. How they do that based on that relationship, that's what we need to understand. Our ability to measure that holistically is a challenge. Right? So we have to identify based on which data sources we have, which measurement companies we can get to, which connectedness of data can we, can we get to that we can identify most of those things and then how much of those do we have to take liberties to be able to triangulate together and say, now I understand this relationship, so if I understand it, I can optimize against it. So now that, if you look at TV historically, the, the relation, and even with the expansion of cable networks and things, you had relatively discrete numbers of, of parties that you had to deal with, whether you were working from the supply side or the demand side, to get your message in front of a large percentage of the audience, right? So in the beginning, there were a few networks. and Well, in the beginning, there were radio networks. And then you had some TV networks. And you did that. And, and kind of the, you know, it's been described as an existential threat. Um, but it's basically just new networks of attention. Um, and it's where people are shifting their attention. And, and it seems one of the things that um, is challenging if you're looking at it from the perspective of being able to understand and measure and look across all of these things that as as everybody kind of will recognize that that is potentially shift, or it's definitely shifting where attention is being spent and focused. Um, what can what what can we do to work together to create, and maybe more to Jonathan's point a little bit earlier, to make this as relatively seamless and easy as it once was with TV, as someone like Facebook or Google may claim to make it easy now, um, where you can go spend a lot of money and get the reach and frequency you want against an outcome, and you can start measuring and you can start using these data right now. <coughs> You have to go do a data integration with someone else, and you have to do cross-device with someone else, and you have to go do, you know, five different strategies for this just to run a simple campaign. And that's not a people aren't going to put up with that, right? The the outcome has to be so outsized to that, and that's where the opportunity for fraud and things are created because it has to be kind of simplified to get this relatively vanilla offering. How how do we get past that so that we can we can operate more collectively? Um, in a way that does kind of raise the boat for a wider range of content and, and doesn't, you know, on the, on the buy side, it doesn't limit you to, you know, five options. Anybody can start with that. Yeah, I'll, I'll jump in. So first of all, um, I think we have to acknowledge that audience measurement is pretty busted in the United States now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think the fact that we still really do measure in silos um, and also the fact that you have a bunch of walled gardens who have managed to exist outside the silos obviously creates this challenge. Um, but also I think the thing I worry about, you know, and, and, and look, we are committed to a world where, you know, we're taking money from Jonathan or, or George's company and on behalf of their advertisers, and we're doing whatever we can within the things we control to drive the best potential outcome. The thing is, we don't understand what drives that, right? So a place where we, we have really sparse information is, what is it about a given exposure that drives some outcome? Is it you reach the right people? Is it that you reach the right people in the right environment? That people were really leaning forward and engaged versus half asleep with their phone on their lap? Um, so you know, I think one of the key things, and I've been, I've been talking about this a lot, is you know, we're struggling with things like Nielsen total audience and Comscore, and 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 when we're when we're in those discussions, we're really talking about solving a 2005 problem, right? right? We needed cross media measurement of exposure and consumption then, 
Um, and, and unless we get everybody in a room together and say, Nielsen Comscore, TRA, TiVo, um, T-Vision, this is the platform you need to build, and you need to build it on behalf of advertisers and media companies and agencies, we're going to be nowhere. So I think part of it is just get us in a room and get us aligned where the future needs to be. And uh, I mean, I, I agree with that. I think part of what will have to come out of that conversation in the room is almost uh, a layer cake of, mm -hmm. of data and effects, right? Because if everyone's not working with more or less the same data in more or less comparable format, then the problem of trying to understand what's happening across impressions on different platforms and trying to connect that back to effects becomes virtually impossible because yeah. right. you don't know what you left out. And you know, I think about even just trying to do the simplest TV campaign measurement, which I should be able to run an addressable campaign in a couple of markets and do it with one creative in one place and a different creative in another place and find out whether the product sold better one place than the other place. That works as long as that brand has no other advertising in market and hasn't for a long time. But the conditions for that real world test are never gonna happen because the brands know that if they stopped advertising in those markets so they could run the test, they would lose money because that's why they advertise in the first place. So it's one of those, you know, until we can sort of build it up from the bottom, I think you never get to the ability to answer questions about outcomes the right way. So so what does it take to make advertising great again? I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> um, to make advertising great or to make? Yeah, to make, well, to make this process work, right? This process, everybody's basically points out and we can spend all day talking about how it's broken, right? You don't really know the outcome. No one's willing to share the device graphs. You have imperfect information on the users. You shouldn't be targeting users. You should be targeting households. No, you should be targeting households. No, you should be, like, there's yeah. no, no one, everyone's not gonna agree on what this is. So, you know, we, we kind of have this, this current state where everyone is, has a vested interest in perpetuating the status quo, even though they can see some glimpse or some portion of the future that is a better future. So it's like, how do we make that a better, how do we make actual progress that, what I see is I see that the, the change in the consumer behavior, in the consumption of media and, and the time for your attention, whether it's advertising supported or not, those options have exploded. Right, and if we don't come up with a better solution, right, then the marketer goes to where the marketer can spend their money, right? That's just a fact of life, and and it, it seems like we're kind of dancing around the. I don't. Periphery. I don't see us really perpetuating the status quo. I, I I see a new status quo emerging, and part of that new status quo is is one of the the you know I think the major differences between a television campaign versus say an OTT campaign is that, uh, and this, this, this sort of status quo that's emerging is more walled gardens, even if they're smaller walled gardens. So as, a, as an inventory owner, I can make inventory available to you that no one else really can see, yeah. right? You, you don't have to share the, the view into all of the opportunity to advertise. Where on linear TV, you know, you've got a Nielsen panel, you've got plenty of sources of ads runs, you slap the ads runs on the TV viewing and you can see every bit of advertising that goes on. In the dis digital world, it's not like that. You know, you've got more uh, private marketplaces emerging, um, you've got different uh, ways to access the data through lots of dips and SSPs. So I, I think that that's kind of becoming, unfortunately, the new normal um, and just again, going back to what Howard said, you know, sometimes it is all about, uh, you know, getting everyone in a room and sort of putting the new, trying to get the new rules in place, which is for us to really make this marketplace work, we have to have more visibility and transparency into the inventory, you know, wherever it's available. And I think that on the digital side, we don't have that same level of transparency, kind of ironically, you know, uh, ironically enough. What you see more and more of these days, which um, I think it's a byproduct of, of not having a consensus or, or, or not striving to go towards consensus because people are just seeing that it's, it's taking too long and they can't answer the question that they want to answer, you're seeing the fragmentation of measurement. Mm -hmm. So you're seeing Howard and the broadcasters doing their own things because they can't wait around. You're seeing Lyle and Group M 
doing his own thing because he can't wait around. Yeah. You're seeing Google and Facebook saying, screw it, nobody's going to tell me what to do because I'm going to do it under my own environment. Nobody knows better than I do in my own environment. So you have the fragmentation of measurement. Are they all wrong? Are they all right? Probably, right? But if you see that happening, it, it further puts us away from the point of actually getting a unified measurement of anything at that point. So I think in the short term, we're probably going to have to deal with what we have to deal with to learn in those environments as much as we can, steal what we can from each one of those things, what works, what doesn't work. And then at some point, some point, I mean, we do have a lot of industry bodies. And, and what, what I find surprisingly is that we can't, we can't as an industry body force it in some form or fashion, right? I think the brands are probably as much to blame for anybody else because they say they want it and then they, they kind of do the same thing over and over again, right? I want this, but screw it, I'm still going to spend money. Well, if you want this because you know that you're not spending your money smarter, then why would you keep spending your money? Right? It makes no sense to me, but I think that's true. Like, if I, what happens if I stop spending? <laughs> My sales go off. Right? We, we know that test. That's been done historically. You shut off TV guess what, your sales are probably going to go down, right? So I don't think they're willing to hedge that, that bet in this day and age. But I think at some point, if we allow what's happening now, which is exactly what, what, why we're having this conversation about the fragmentation of media and the content and experience, is we're, ha we're seeing the same type of fragmentation of measurement. We definitely have fragmentation of data, and that's, that's a moot point. But fragmentation of measurement, you're seeing, you're seeing more of because everybody's stepping back and saying, yeah, it's not going to work. So I'm just going to try to figure out in my own environment and then go to advertisers or go to agencies or go to whoever and saying, here's my framework. It's better than any framework that you're probably going to see holistically, but just let me remind you, it's this framework built for you. Because let me tell you, you're the brand. I'm doing everything for you. Do you really need right, to, to compare yourself against every single brand that exists today, or do you need something special for you? because we talk about personalization, so I'm going to create a personalized measurement framework for you, right? That probably gets us closer to what the brand is asking us to, but then the question is, how do I compare that when I want to look at buying, selling, and trading? Mm -hmm. So if, you, if you have a plan, That's and right. the plan is per advertiser or campaign, to, to Howard's earlier comment, but if you have a plan specifically, how does it get perpetuated across the research phase? How does it get perpetuated in terms of methodology? How do you make sure that the data is tied back? How do you, how do you, and repeat that for every single advertiser, right? That the advertiser, I agree that the advertiser has to have metrics that are meaningful to them, but how much of that is the advertiser or agency willing to share with the media owner, right? How, much, how does that all come together? Uh, I mean, I think part of the key to bringing it together is having some standardization across the walled gardens of what they count and how they count it. Because I understand that from the sell side, it is a very attractive proposition for media owners to say, you know, we can help package up these audiences and we have our special sauce and proprietary tools that make it easier for us to do, you know, rich, awesome experiences for consumers. Um, the trick is without some fundamental, you know, building blocks of comparability, it's really hard for a big advertiser to make choices about allocating their entire portfolio across you know, all the people that they want to reach. Because right. the reality is that usually those people aren't all in one of the places. And in fact, part of the success of Facebook and of Google is that they have both the targeting capability within their platforms and such incredibly oh, broad gosh. reach that pretty much everybody is in there. And the more... Um, niche or the more focused a particular inventory owner is, the less, um, the harder it is to start roping all those different potential groups of people together and measuring what happens with them. So I'm, what I would love to see is, you know, some, like, let's agree on what a video impression is and how we count it. And is it duration weighted or is it best measured by a average minute audience and a rating point, by the way, I think that, that last one is not the right answer. Right. Um, and, you know, sort of lather, rinse, repeat as we go through, okay, what's a viewability standard? What's a, you know, how much of a right, thing but, but needs to we, be do there? How long does it need to be there? Overly complicated, because if you know the outcome and you have some access to the data, so you know it was played, because mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's lack of viewability in every environment and all yep. of that. 
it right. makes difference. If you have but more it's... transparency for the data, then the media owner and the, the advertiser, which is more the traditional TV model, which is you do get everybody in the room and you do sit down and you agree on a plan and you know the parties that you're dealing with, is it is that's a pos that, that's a possibility, right? Well, but how do you get scale yeah. at that? Well, because look, I think one of the things, and, and Jonathan just talked about it, is I think there's got to be acknowledgement in television that this is a team sport, mm -hmm. right? And and if exactly. we look, I think it, it'd be great if we could get to a place where we agree upon, you know, there's there's TRA's integration with um, with whoever their product sales data set is, and that's what we're going to use for Pepsi and Coke and Unilever and. And there's a common data set, and there's a common approach to forecasting, because remember, TV is a futures game. We have to predict what the audience is going to be for a spot that against a specific audience target. But the other, the other place I think that's really important, and I don't think digital ever got there from a programmatic standpoint, is if I'm good as a media owner, I and I get back to something I said earlier, I'm going to know that this piece of inventory is highly responsive for one of Jonathan or George's categories. And they may not know that because they may never have run their brand through there. But if I'm good about managing and insights that I could provide, I know that. And I can, I, I'm, you're always going to want me to add that piece of insight into what you know about where the audience is at scale at the right CPM. So, so, you know, look, this, this idea that there's a syndicated solution and we snap our fingers and we're all happy in doing this across $75 billion, no. But could we do this in bigger scale? Yeah. Yeah, okay. so, I think at some point, if we, if we, if we, it's a huge problem to undertake. If we break it down to bite-sized chunks and where it's winnable, I think you just, identify, because I think Jonathan made a good point, and, and that's probably the most important point, I think, as, as to start the process of actually getting to some sort of unified measurement, is tell me the things that I can actually do the same across any, anything, right? Can I count the same way across anything, yeah. right? Can I count across 80%, 70%? At some point, I don't need perfection, right? That's okay. I'm, I'm like, if, if everybody in this room is, is expecting perfection, I should just you all leave because it's never going to happen, <laughs> right? But but can I get to a place where I'm, I'm, at, I'm very comfortable so I can, I can predict with accuracy, right? So is that, can I, can, I, can I look at reach and frequency the same way? Can I look at an audience the same person? Can I count an impression the same way? An exposure the same way? That's fine. If I can get to a base of anything, let me tell you, a base of anything is better than differentiating of everything, right? Some base is actually really important for us because, because if you start that, then let me tell you something, you set a precedence. Once you set the precedence, nobody can back out of the precedence anymore, right? Th and we've done this before, right? As much as everybody hates or loves Nielsen, we've, this is them before, right? There's a currency in place, right? We've changed currencies throughout history, right? Some have been forced. So it's there, we can do it. So the question becomes, at what point do we, do we, do we agree on one thing? Let's agree on one thing, right? And then work ourselves off of that. Because that at least will give us a starting point where I can go to Howard and say, okay, this is, this, this, this is the counting mechanism, right? I don't care. Anything after that, I'll treat you uniquely from anybody else, but this is the one thing that I will treat it exactly the same way across the board. You know, one of the things that's another uh, building block as we get to more response-based measurement um, is that marketers increasingly feel comfortable onboarding their first-party data in the digital world as well as the television, the television world. So when we have these large set-top box data sets available, like we do at TiVo, um, the clients increasingly say, you know, I'm not going to use that third-party target. I know that's meant to represent what I need it to represent, but I'm going to onboard that first-party data. And they don't necessarily tell us what the segment means, you know, what it is the definition, but increasingly those segments contain um, information about the past purchasing behavior or the value of that consumer to the marketer. And if you begin, if you think about uh, an index of you know, propensity to purchase a Ford F-150, and then you sort of turn that on your head and you say, well, it, it's really you know, this group of consumers who's doing something much more specific in terms of economic value, you could, opt, you could predict the presence of that in future inventory, just like you predict, 
you know, a, a laundry detergent, heavy laundry detergent buyer today. So I, I think one of the changes that we're going to see uh, happen, and I think we're going to, this is going to accelerate, is the use of first-party data, or the comfort that marketers have with first-party data in our advertising ecosystem is really going to drive a lot of these changes to response-based measurement. So that's our half hour, um, quickly. But I want to thank everybody for, for their time and thoughts. And I'm, I think some of us at least will be around afterwards if there's questions. Great. Thanks. Great. Thanks.